spoilers. I am slightly in love with Vicky. I really enjoyed the first season of Doctor Who, but the second season is just phenomenal. I'm so excited to be reviewing the second season today. I'm sorry it took me a long time to get around to it from doing the first season, but for me, completely worth the wait. So as usual, I'll just go through each serial very quickly because I don't want this video to be on forever. But if you have any more specific questions about my more detailed thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will very happily talk Doctor Who with you. So, Planet of the Giants, we're off to a fantastic start. They're back in the 1960s, but they're in miniature form. And everything is huge, they're like borrowers. And I instantly fell in love with this. I love the concept, I love the narrative development of this episode. And my first thought was, I want them to remake this. I want to see a teeny weeny Jodie Whittaker and I just, I loved it and I think remaking it today would be great. Dalek Invasion of Earth. We can't have a season without the Daleks. We get to see Trafalgar Square with the Daleks. Very exciting. And the thing that kind of shocked me most about this, oh Bernard Cribbins was in it, absolutely brilliant, but the Doctor just abandoned Susan. Now I'm not that bothered because I don't like, I don't care for Susan as a character that much, but he just abandoned his granddaughter. It's like, well, that's a very odd way to end an episode. Then we have the rescue. This is where we first meet Vicky. This is, of course, a rescue mission, which is not an uncommon story for Doctor Who, and I did like it. Fantastic introduction to Vicky. Maureen O'Brien is brilliant. She is my favourite, current favourite classic Doctor Who companion. Granted, I haven't got that many to go on. The, the, the Coquillion, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, look great. There are some hilariously bad camera angles in this episode, but I did thoroughly enjoy it. Okay, so then we're going back to the Romans with the episodes of the Romans. And this one was the first time I kind of looked at Barbara and thought, actually, you know something, I kind of like you as a character. She's very worldly, she's very uh, very intelligent, very educated, of course, as a teacher she would be. But this this kind of really hit home that this was a family show and it was very educational. Nowadays we don't really get that many in your face educational episodes. Like I'm thinking of, you know, Rory the Centurion didn't really learn that much. This is obvious fact after fact after fact, most of which are coming from Barbara. And it kind of made me think I wish we had some more historical episodes. Then we head to the planet Vortis with the web planet. This one, I didn't really feel any sense of threat. There wasn't really anything in this that I thought was scary. The, the special effects were so bad, but obviously understandable given the age of the episode. Also, what I noticed about this is there's a lot of vast space. Very vast areas of space. Well, we're in space. So that's very different to how we have it now because nowadays a lot of the Doctor Who episodes are very claustrophobic. And that obviously play, plays on a lot of people's fear of claustrophobia. This is completely the opposite. It works, not an amazing episode, but not a bad episode either. The Crusade, what can I say about a series that's kind of half missing? There are some reconstructions of this on YouTube and I did watch them, but obviously they're not as easy to follow as the actual episode. So fingers crossed one day they will find all of the missing parts of The Crusade. But what I watched was great but not ex exactly as engaging as I expect the episode would have been. The Space Museum. How delightful. They're in a museum that's full of spacesuits and Dalek shells and it's very much like being inside a Doctor Who exhibition. That's what it felt like to me when I was watching it. This one was kind of the episode where I decided that yes, I absolutely 100% love Vicky. And also the Doctor was very funny in this one. You know, Hartnell's Doctor is great, but he never really felt like the doctors that I know and love as a, a new Who fan. But in this one, he was so witty, so funny, so quick. And I just thought, yeah, this is this is a bit of the doctor that I see in, in Tennant and Capaldi. And it was a really fun episode and I really liked it. And ultimately, we have a bit more history. We have Queen Elizabeth and Shakespeare and the Daleks. Very thrilling combination. Obviously, we've visited Shakespeare before. We've had Queen Elizabeth since then and obviously we've had the Daleks as well. Very thrilling, and there's nothing about it that I didn't like. There's nothing about it that would ever make it my favorite episode, but I love the subject matter, and for that reason, I really did enjoy it. I definitely think we're ending on a high with the Time Meddler, and this is the first time where I've been, I think, properly invested in the narrative development of a, of a serial, because with this one, there's something that's revealed in, I think, the second episode, maybe the third. 
could be the first. Anyway, something's revealed and it did make me wonder, well, what? How, how did that happen? What's going on? It was the first time I actually felt hooked in with the story. Also, we have no Barbara and Ian, which for me is great because I really didn't like them. It's the Doctor and it's Vicky and they're a great team and I love Vicky. Back in 1066, Battle of Hastings, William the Conqueror, again, historical, educational, we're learning a lot, it's a great story, there's... The, the ending really surprised me, which rarely happens with any of the predecessors for this episode. I thought it was a phenomenal ending to a really great season. Needless to say, I am so excited to get on with season three. I know I have many, many seasons left to watch, but with Classic Who, I'm off to a fantastic start and I'm really enjoying it a lot. <laughs>